Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make the Granny Pop V-neck pullover. I'll be using Prism yarn from Mary Maxim and the color that I'm going to be using is Landscape. You'll need two hooks for this pattern, a five millimeter as well as a 4.5 millimeter. These are my Streamline hooks from Furls and this is the Taurus hook. And I'll have links in the description box on where to purchase the hooks as well as the yarn and also the hook tray as well which is really handy so to prevent your hooks from rolling and falling on the floor this pattern uses beginner friendly stitches but you will need to know how to crochet as well as make your basic stitches that include the single crochet single crochet in the back loop only slip stitch and double crochet I will work through the video fairly quickly, so if you need to slow it down, make sure to click on the settings, which is the gear icon below this video, and you can change the speed to suit your preference. I will be showing you the small size sweater in this tutorial, but the pattern does include extra small to 5X, so you can go to the blog or purchase the pattern in one of my shops, and you will find all the details for the yarn, the hooks, and the patterns in the description box below this video. So I'm going to begin with my larger hook. Let's put a slip knot on the hook. And we're going to start out with a chain of 72. Now I just wanted to mention that all of our sizes begin with the same number of chains. You just will continue making your yoke bigger for the larger sizes. So now what we're going to do is single crochet in the second chain from the hook, but we're going to go through the back bumps of the chain. Okay, so you're just working single crochets now across those back bumps. So we're going to end up with 71 stitches. So I will continue working that across and I'll meet you up. Okay, so now we're going to chain three and we'll work three doubles in the first stitch. Chain one and we'll be skipping the next stitch and in the next stitch, we're going to work a V. So a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Now we'll chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet into the next three, one, two, three, chain one, skip a stitch, and we're going to repeat that three more times. Okay, chain one, skip a stitch, and then another V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So, so far we have started the front, half of the front, the V separates us now for the sleeve section. The V now will separate us for our back section, so we're going to do that section next. So we'll chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next three, one, two, three, chain one, skip a stitch, and we're going to repeat that six more times. So we'll end up with seven 3DC clusters. So I'm gonna work that across and then I'll meet you up. 
Okay, so I've chained one, skip a stitch, V stitch in the next, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now we're to our next sleeve section. So chain one, skip a stitch, three, chain one, skip a stitch. We're repeating this three more times. Okay, so one, two, three, four, four clusters. Chain one, skip a stitch. We'll work a V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet chain one, skip the next stitch, and in our last stitch we're going to work four doubles. One, two, three, four. Then we will chain three and turn. So we have everything separated out. It gets easier after this point. So we're going to work three doubles between these doubles right here. The first and the second. So one, two, three, chain one, skip and work three doubles in the next chain one space. Chain one. Now we come to the V. So every time you come to a V, we're going to do another V stitch in that chain one space. So double, chain one, and a double, chain one. And now in every chain one space, we're going to work three double crochets. Chain one, in the next chain one space, three doubles. chain one. So repeat that to our next. So I've chained one and in the V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. Okay, so we're always working a chain one between our clusters. So I'm going to continue working my three DCs in every chain one space across. I'll work another V in the next V stitch and so on all the way across. So I'll meet you up the other side. Okay, so I've worked across and in the turning chain, we're going to work four doubles. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's take a look at now how this is coming. So we'll count the clusters for you just to help keep you on track. So we have two here separated by our V one, two, three, four, five. So we started with four, we've gone up to five. So each section is going up as we go. So here's our next V, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Our next V, one, two, three, four, five. Our next V and then two clusters. Now how this will work is we're going to bring in our fronts to make the V. Then we can join them up and begin working in the round. So this is how we're going to get the shape to be that V neck that we want. So it's similar to the cardigan, but we're just going to join it up as we once we've worked our increases. So this round, we're not going to increase because we don't need to increase every round. Otherwise, it would increase too drastically. So we're going to chain out four. We're going to skip over this cluster and work three doubles in the next chain one space. So this is the difference with this row is that we're doing that chain four at the beginning. So chain one.
chain one and then in the V we'll work another V stitch. Chain one and in the chain one space, three doubles. Chain one, three doubles in the next chain one space. And we're just gonna continue in this manner, working all the way across. Remember, every time you get to the V, pay attention because you need to do a V stitch there. So I'm gonna work that across. I'll meet you at the end to show you how to end this row. Okay, so I'm coming to the end and in that turning chain, I've chained one, we're just going to work a double crochet. Chain three and turn. Okay, so this row will now start with three DC in the first chain one space. One, two, three, chain one. And then the pattern again is just repetitive. The only thing you really need to pay attention is to what we're doing here with the increases. So you're just gonna continue now working your three DCs in the chain one spaces separated by chain ones and working Vs in all of the V stitches. Okay, so I'm going to complete this row next. Okay, so once you get all the way to the end, you're going to work four doubles. Chain three. And we're going to increase again by going between these two doubles. So one, two, three, chain one. And in the next chain one space, chain one and continue. So we're gonna go all the way ending with four doubles in, in the turning chain here. Okay, so I finished off with my four doubles and we need to increase again. So we're going to chain three and we're repeating the same thing. So we're working three doubles between the first two doubles. chain one. Okay, so that's just a repeat of the last row now. So we've got to make sure we get the right number of stitches increased to the front so that our fronts and backs equal up. Okay, so once you get to the end, we're going to do our four doubles. Chain one, do your four doubles in the turning chain. Okay, so now what we're going to do is our chain four row again. So one, two, three, four. So we won't be increasing this time. And we'll be working the three doubles in the next chain one space. Okay, so we're just repeating row three at this point, and then what you're going to do, we want a total for this size of 12 rows. So we're going to repeat, so one, two, three, we're going to repeat four, five, six, seven. So work row four, five, six, seven, and then do row four again. Okay, so that you get to a total of 12 rows. So I'm gonna work up the rest of my yoke off camera following that pattern. This is how it's looking. So we have lots of nice color changes. We're actually gonna get into some blue with this one as well. You can use a solid color. You can do something like this, really whatever you want. Okay, so I've been working away on my yoke and I'm finishing with row 12 and four doubles in that last stitch. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine 
clusters on each side. And at the back, you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So you want to make sure that your fronts equal your back. Okay, so I'm finishing off on the wrong side of my work. We're going to chain one. We're going to join into that starting chain. Okay, fasten off. So now this is our right side of our work. We finished on the wrong side. Continue working from the center. I don't want to join here. So let's join at a corner. We're going to be working our fronts and our back all as one piece now. So I'm going to turn so that my back is facing, right side is facing. I'm going to take my yarn make a slip knot, put that on the hook. And here is the V stitch. We're going to join into that first chain one space. We'll chain three and we'll work that first cluster. So we'll do two double crochets. Our chain three counts as one double. chain one, and then we're going to work across the back in our clusters, separated by chain ones. Okay, so work all the way across. I'm gonna meet you up over here and show you how to skip the sleeves. So now I've worked across a total of 19 clusters. We're going to skip the V-stitch. We're going to skip the entire sleeve. We're going to find the next V stitch. We're skipping it as well. And right into the next chain one space, we'll work our three doubles. Chain one. Okay, and now we're working across the front. Okay, so I'm gonna work to this section and then we'll meet up so again. What I'm gonna do is I am gonna weave this tail in because I wanna make sure that this is secure before I get working. And I'm gonna weave it back. I'm gonna give it a little knot. And then I'm going to weave it back across the like color. So weave it back through the pink. I just want to make sure that doesn't come undone or anything as I work this. Okay. So chain one, and then you're working three. Okay, so this is what it's looking like now. So we're going to have this all joined up. So we have our V and we're gonna continue. So I'm gonna finish working across. I'm coming to the end of my ball and it's wanting to tangle a little on me. So I'm gonna work away at this. I'm gonna get 
across. We're going to skip this sleeve section and join back up. Okay, so I've come to my next V stitch. So now we're skipping the V, we're skipping over the entire sleeve section. Skipping over this V and we're slip stitching into that starting chain three to join. We're going to chain three and we're going to turn. So now we're back to the wrong side of our work. You could continue working in the round, but to keep consistent with going back and forth with the rows, I would prefer that you turn and it will keep everything consistent. Now I didn't count those clusters for you, so let's maybe count the clusters that we had for the front. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19. So we know that our front and our backs are equal. And I'm going to continue working that across. So that's a total of 38 clusters with your front and your back piece. So that's what we're working now around. Okay, so I've worked across 19 and now at the underarm section, we're just working another 3DC in that chain one space. So that is 20 clusters now in total. I'm gonna continue working around. Okay, so I've worked across now 38 clusters. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to slip stitch into that first cluster, which is in the underarm spot. One, two, three. We're gonna turn, we're back to the right side of our work again. And I work two doubles, okay? So we're just gonna be going back and forth turning the round so our join is going to stay at this underarm which is exactly what we want it's going to keep everything straight and we can just continue now i'm coming to the end of my ball here with the gray so you may want to try and match up when you join this section on but it's really up to you. So if I were to pull out the inside of this ball again, I'm going to be going with the dark and I think that that will transition nicely. So I may just go with that. So if you can see how we started, we started again with the dark. And if you look here, this dark is going to gray. So I think it's gonna look okay if we join that. But your other option would be like this ball here. Ooh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to decide. That would be pulling it from the outside, but I could go over to the blue as well. Because this sort of gray almost goes into that bluey color. So that may look nice as well. Really, whatever you want. Just try to get it that it looks somewhat consistent. I think that that would help it look a little nicer as you transition it. The other option is if you really want it to match right up with this color, you would need to pull out a fairly big section. This color, that these balls have a lot of different colors in them. So you would have to, again, pull out and snip off and match up that color. So I'm gonna continue working this around. Okay, so I have run out of my gray just about the underarm. So if I had run out over more to the front, I definitely would have pulled out. I was planning actually on doing that, but because I'm ending at the underarm, I'm not as worried that it's gonna drastically shift to the darker color. 
because we're already, we were already working with dark here, I think it's going to look fine. But I was prepared. I'm just going to show you the thumb join here as well. So I was prepared to pull this all the way out so that it blended because if it's if you're changing at the front of your sweater, you definitely don't want it to be super noticeable, but no one's going to notice this. So I'm just going to use the thumb join. So I'm going to take my yarn, bring in my new color. I always just take my thumb and my index finger, pinch that. I wrap the yarn around my thumb and the yarn two times. And then the third time I just go between my tails and my thumb and I just tuck them underneath. So you're tucking them right down. You're gripping it with your thumb so it doesn't pull apart. And then that's a good knot. But definitely be prepared to pull out a chunk to get a good transition if it's in a really noticeable spot. Mine just so happened that it was right at the underarm. Not liking how that's looking. Sometimes you have to play around with your tension just to get your knot in the right place. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue across. Worked around 38 clusters. I'm going to chain one, slip stitch to join in our starting chain three, chain three and turn. And see, when we're at the underarm, the colors on the join side are always gonna be changing. So I think it was fine to have that on this side as well. Okay, so now you can see the front of the V is looking and when we get that ribbed little collar that goes around, it's gonna make it look a lot nicer, really pull it all together. So now at this point, you can work your pullover as long as you want. I'm gonna go with a more um, waist length for myself, but that is really, you can just keep going as long as you want. So don't feel you have to stop at that length. So I'm gonna continue working mine off camera. I'll meet you back to show you how to do the band to finish it off. But in the meantime, I'm gonna work that off camera and then I'm gonna switch over and show you how to work one of the sleeves. How to work the sleeve. Again, you could play around with your yarn colors if you want. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to join in with the pink, which kind of matches up with what we have here anyways. Each sleeve is going to be different. This one has the tan. So now what you want to do is to the right of what you're working on, you want to find that V stitch. We're going to slip stitch into it. Then we are going to go over to the next V stitch and slip stitch into it. Okay, so that's already pulled in our sleeve that it's not quite as big. Can use this tail to sew this opening right here, just sew it so that it's not so open. We're also on the right side of our work and I'm slip stitching over so that we're into that chain one space. I'm going to chain three and work our two doubles. Okay, so we're just working around. in our pattern. Okay, so I have a total of 16 clusters. I'm going to slip stitch in our starting chain three to join. I'm gonna chain three and turn. 
and I'm going to just continue working back around. Working 3DC, so our starting chain three counts as a double crochet, working two doubles, chaining one between each cluster, working that around. Okay, I've chained one, I'm going to slip stitch to join. Chain three and turn. And if you want to do decreases, I've had this request a lot with the other patterns, the cardigan and the other pullover. I'm going to show you how you can do a decrease and you can add in as many decreases as you'd like. So I, th I think I'm going to do my decrease at the end. So I'm going to work cluster and I'm going to work around and I'm going to meet you up at the last two chain one spaces and I'll show you how to work that decrease. Okay so I'm coming up to I have two chain one spaces left so to do a decrease you're going to work a double crochet, yarn over, go through the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the next chain one space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, and then work a double crochet. Okay, so we've now decreased. So these two um, spaces are now only one cluster. We'll chain one, we'll join, chain three and turn. Now I wouldn't add another decrease this round. I would maybe do every other and it's up to you how many you would want to do, how narrow you want to make your sleeve. So now we're skipping all the way over. And this is hit this decrease is also hidden in that underarm area so you're not going to notice that this looks slightly different than our other clusters. Okay, so I'm going to work that around. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. Chain one and join. Chain three, turn. And I'm going to do this round again without any decreases because I don't want very many decreases with my sleeve, so I don't want to do another one too quickly. And I'm also thinking it would be nice to do the decrease that it's not in the same um, spot as this last one. So if I wait till the next, it will put it to the other side. So I'm gonna do the decrease on the third. Okay, so I'm finishing up. So I've done two rounds here now without any decreases. And this third round now I'll do another decrease. And you can continue working as, like I say, as many decreases as you would like, but this will be my last one because I don't want my sleeve too narrow. I really personally would prefer it not narrowed at all, but just for those of you that have wanted to learn how to decrease the sleeve, I wanted to show you in this tutorial how to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna work it around to the last two chain one spaces and then I'll meet you okay, up. Okay, so I'm coming up to my last two chain one spaces. So again, to do the decrease, we're yarning over, we're going through the first chain one space, working a double crochet. Then we'll yarn over, go through the same stitch or the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go right to the next chain one space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through three. And then work another double crochet as normal. 
chain one, slip stitch in the starting chain three to join, chain three, turn. Okay, so now we have that we've done a decrease here and we've done a decrease over on this side here. And now we'll continue working. So if you want to do more decreases, just add those in to narrow the sleeve out as you desire. And you can try this on as you go to get the right length of sleeve. So you can easily alter it. You could stop at almost at this point and do a little band and even make it short sleeve and that would look great as well. Really whatever, you could go down to the elbow. You could do a three quarter length. I'm going to do a full length sleeve because I think this is going to be really nice for fall. I love these colors for fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to work it down as long as I need to go and then I'm going to add a cuff to it. So I'll meet you back to show you how to work that cuff. Okay, chain one, I've worked all the way around. And so at this point I have 14 clusters and I'm going to continue working with 14 clusters for my sleeve. So I'm going to finish this sleeve as well as my other sleeve and the body off camera and then we'll meet back up to do the collar around our neck opening. Okay, so I finished up working my body and I've worked a total of 16 rounds for the length that I'm wanting to do, which is more the crop waist length. I'm going to slip stitch in that starting chain three to join. I'm going to chain one and turn. So now we're back to the right side of our work. And I'm going to work single crochets in the double crochets around. So I'm going to skip the chain one spaces and just work double crochet, work, working in only the double crochets. Okay, and I'm gonna work that all the way. Okay, so I'm ending here and I have a total of 114 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch to join and I'm going to change over to my smaller hook which is the 4.5 millimeter and I'm going to chain out 11. Okay, so now we're gonna work the join as you go ribbed band. So we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And in each chain across. So that's my first row and we're going to crochet as many rows as we have stitches. So I'll need 114 rows. So I'm going to skip that first stitch. I'm going to slip stitch into the next two. I'm going to turn, putting my yarn to the back. And now I'll single crochet through the back loop only. So now I'll be crocheting my next two rows for the two slip stitches that I just made. So single crochet in the back loop only. I've chained one and then I'm going to single crochet in the back loop of each stitch across. So I have 10 stitches for the band and I'm going to continue working around the edge, the body edge, working rows and slip stitching them. So we'll now slip stitch in the next two Okay, turn and then continue working two more rows again. If you're unsure of what 
to work into. You can always count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like to count as I go just so I do stay on track. I don't miss a stitch. Okay, so you're just going to continue this all the way around, working 114 rows in total for this size. So once you've worked all the way around the band, we're going to slip stitch it together. I'm going to chain one. This is the right side. So we want to take our right sides and place them together and then slip stitch through each stitch down the band. So going to this side right across and just slip stitch across 10 stitches. Then you can fasten off and weave in your tail. So now for the sleeve, you want to make sure you're on your right side. We're going to chain one. We're going to work a single crochet in the next double crochet. So in the center of your cluster and then also in the chain one space. So we're essentially single crocheting in every other stitch around and it's gonna pull your cuff in. Now, if you decided that you wanted more decreases, you may not need to cinch this in anymore. And it all depends really how big you want your cuff. So just alter it as needed. You may need to work in every stitch and space around if you've really decreased, narrowed out the sleeve. Because mine is still fairly big, I'm going to do every other. So I'm gonna have a total of 28 stitches around. Okay, so once we get all the way around, we're going to slip stitch to join. We're going to change over to the smaller hook and this cuff is gonna be worked just like the band that we did for the body. So exactly the same way. We're going to chain out 11. single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain down the chain so that you have a total of 10 stitches. Skip the first stitch, slip stitch into the next two and then we're just working single crochets through the back loop only now all the way around. At the top, we'll chain one and turn. And we'll work back down, working through the back loop only. And then we'll slip stitch in the next two stitches. So we're just gonna continue working this around for this size. You're going to have a total of 28 rows. Okay, so once you get all the way around, we're going to chain one. And I like to put right sides together. So I'm just going to fold it like this so that I can get the right sides of the cuff together. Now what we're going to do is slip stitch through the side 
going through to this side and we're just going to slip stitch it together. Now you could also just cut your tail and sew it if you prefer, but if you don't wanna to have to fasten off, just slip stitch it together. Okay, and once you finish that, we're just going to fasten off and you can weave in that tail. And this is how your cuff's going to look. So now for the collar, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go with my darker color and I'm going to join on by putting a slip knot. I'm going to use the larger hook for this. So I'm going to join in with a slip stitch. Thinking maybe down here more into this corner actually right here. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is two slip, two slip stitches per um, double crochet row. Second slip stitch, you need to put it sort of into the stitch to secure it. Okay, and work that all the way so around. Get up to your neck. It's just one slip stitch per stitch around. It's just gonna give us a nice edge to work with. Okay, so I've worked around the neck and we're coming again to our double crochet rows. So I'm gonna continue slip stitching two per double crochet row. Okay, and I'm gonna continue that around. Okay, so I'm just gonna slip stitch here. Join that around and I'm going to change over to the smaller hook. I'm going to chain one. And now in the back loop of the slip stitches we made, I'm going to work single crochets. So we're gonna do this all the way around, working through the back loop only. Okay, so I've worked my way around. I'm going to slip stitch to join. I'm going to turn and I'm going to single crochet the next five. Chain one, and I'm going to single crochet in the back loop. Going to slip stitch in the back loop of the next two.
turn and then work single cro crochets through the back loop. So we're going to continue joining this around. So working single crochets through the back loop. There's two, three, four, five. Slip stitch in the next two. So as this comes around, we're going to need these front loops to finish off. But now that we have enough loops made, we can start joining it in to the entire stitch if we want, instead of just the back loop. Okay, and as we come around this will come down and go over top of this one. I'm just gonna continue working all the way around my neck opening. And when I get over to the other side, I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I've worked all the way around with my ribbed collar. Now we're coming to this section right here. So now if you wanted this section to go in behind, you could continue to crochet it out and just sew it, or we can also go over top. So I'm coming down to the end and I'm going to slip stitch in that loop that I left available. So there's one, two, and then I'm going to continue working my rows. Okay, and I'm going to slip stitch across the next two. Now you'll want to take your yarn needle and I'm going to sew to those front loops that we left. So that's how it's going to look. If you want, you could stitch it down also here as well if you really want um, to make sure that lays flat, but I think that's okay as it is. So I'm just going to weave this tail along the back. Okay, 
Okay, at this point, you want to weave in any loose ends. Make sure to finish under the arm and you can seam in that opening that's a little bit bigger. You won't really notice, but you can use that tail we left to seam those in. Make sure all your tails are woven in from your bands. So this is the small and it has a 38 inch finished chest size. So as you can see, it has 19 across. So doubling that up, we're at 38 for the small. So it will be an oversized fit. I generally wear a medium. I'm modeling the small, which is a little bit more fitted, but if you want it a little more oversized, go to a bigger size. If you want it a little more fitted, you can always size down like I've done with this one. And you can make it as long as you want. I've shown you the crop version, which sits nicely at the waist. This will gather in and cinch into your waist nicely, but you can always go ahead and make it longer if you prefer. So I used four balls of the Mary Maxim Prism and I still have some left over. So if you do decide to make it a little bit longer or if your gauge is a little off, you should be okay with the four balls for the size small. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell so that you stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.